And let's make it five cards as he has not found what he is looking for. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about Van Meter and his Amulet Boom deck this weekend, and I think a lot of people are familiar with that. But the Eclectic Company deck that's really going around right now, both the Elvish version and the Obzon version we're going to watch, what's really interesting to me is I, I think the consensus among the community is not entirely sure how to build this thing because it's not right. a direct port from Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod is a broken magic card. We all know that by now. Collective Company is very, very good, but you can't just say, swap out my Birthing Pod, swap in Collective Company. Hey, the deck's fixed. How yeah. do you build this deck? Nobody knows. Well, what I've, we're seeing a lot of players do, and you look at David Goldfarb's list of it, is that there are more copies of combo pieces than you would normally expect out of a Birthing Pod deck. He's, he's lower on it, but you see two copies of Anafenza, one copy of Malira, two copies of Viscera Seer. Uh, four companies, I don't yet, yeah, and four Court of Callings. So this finds its combo quicker and more often than a lot of your pod decks did. Um, and also a full four copies of Eternal Witness really shows that I think the strength of these collected company decks is that they're trying to set up to play a fair game of Magic, which this one's not going to be, to be honest. I don't think anyone has any intentions of playing fair Magic when Amulet Bloom is involved, that's for sure. So we're going to see if Chris can get off to something crazy or if David can work his way through his mulligan at five. We're going to start things off with a windswept teeth to kick off round number nine here on day two of coverage. Van Meer will start with a gemstone mine. Three counters on that. He's tapping mana. Could be a stirrings. Could be an amulet. It'll be a serum visions, though. Yeah, serum visions is actually oftentimes what you'll see them start on, even if they do have the other cards you mentioned. See an amulet in his scry. What he has right now is he has a hive mind. He has appears to be two summoner's packs and then a lot of lands, including at least one bounce land and a Teleria West. So he has his six mana cards to get to, whether it's... I mean, hive mind double packed is probably going to be our route to victory here. Um, one packed is something the Obzon Company can definitely pay for. Two of them is probably out. So what he's looking for is he's looking for cards like Summer Bloom, Azusa, and to a certain point, Amulet of Vigor. I think he'll keep the Amulet on top. You see me actually keeps both on top here. A Razor Verge Thicket there for Goldfarb, and now a copy of Wall of Roots. He'll have to, of course, crack that Windswept Tea. So we'll see what land he wants to search up as he takes a look at his hand. A lot of options here between Temple Garden, Godless Shrine, and, of course, Overgrown Tomb. I suppose he could go basic hunting, but I find that to be rather unlikely. There are copies... So he has a copy of Collected Company and Court of Calling in his hand, so David does. So he has ability to find some pieces to disrupt Chris. So if Chris goes for something like Amulet of Vigor, he, he can destroy it. That really will only set back Chris a turn, unless Chris has something like Summer Bloom. And Glowfarm goes with an Overgrown Tomb. He's down to 17. The Wall of Roots is on the battlefield. We'll see what Chris can put together. Again, you mentioned the Amulet of Vigor that he saw in the Scry. The other card we didn't get a great look at. But he did keep them both. Yep. We know that. So well, he's what, happy enough. What Amulet is setting up for, if he just has Amulet and nothing else, it's a turn five kill. Because he'll have the Amulet in play, and on turn five he'll play a Bounce Land, untap it, have six mana, play Hive Mind two packs. Okay. So now he's looking for cards that can improve that Goldfish past the point of just being a turn five kill. Well, he found out what it was. It was a Serum Visions. That means he's going to draw the Amulet, and I'll get to Scry twice. Don't get a great look at what CVM's looking at, but he will decide accordingly here. He's looking for Summer Blooms and Azusas. Those are the things that will speed this up. Just kind of cheat some lands into play. Yeah, I mean, he has the, like I said, he has the amulet. So he, right now he has a turn five, which should almost, play that should almost certainly be a win. Okay. So really, we, he just needs to make things better. Um, I think a Slaughter Pact is also a pretty reasonable card to find here as it slows down David a turn. It doesn't speed him up, but that'll probably keep David honest in case David has a fast combo. Tendo Ice Bridge into Amulet of Vigor, the play for Chris Van Meter. Goldfarb with just, uh just a third land and say go. And I'm not believe buying that for a second. <laughs> I mean, David's on five. There's a chance his hand is just mana, but we know that that's not the case. Yeah, he does have a collective company in hand. That's an instant spell, so he will be playing that here, I imagine, on Van Meter's end step. Yeah. There's temptation here to pact for Azusa, play Azusa, and start getting extra bounce lands. Now, the issue is this is turn three, so pacting for Azusa gets Azusa. You have to pay for the pact on turn four, and then on turn five you can combo, but that doesn't actually improve on the turn five kill. So. Because David's not forcing any action from Chris, while Chris could go for that line, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just do nothing instead. Maybe just play a bounce land, pick up his gemstone mine, pass the turn back. He does have a Golgari rot farm in hand after all. Yeah, well, if he has a Simic growth chamber or a bounce land which can help him create that second blue mana, he could transmute a Teleria West for something like Slaughter Pact. And that's something he could actually do, you know, transmute for Slaughter Pact, play Slaughter Pact this turn, pay for it on turn four, combo on turn five. Okay. I, I don't know if he has, the, the, the issue is that he does not want to use the gemstone mine. He, can't lose his land. Well, here's another gemstone mine. 
it's a very tough puzzle that Amulet Boom presents. So see if I'm just going to play a land and pass the turn back. Goldfarb is going to sacrifice his Verdant Catacombs. Yeah. So I think the line he's on is that he's going to just play some lands. Next turn, he'll play Mana Confluence. He'll transmute to Teleria West for maybe a Slaughter Pact. Then on turn five, he'll play the last land, which is the Golgari Rot Farm. That's six mana, tap everything, play Hive Mind, and throw all the packs he's accumulated onto the board. Well, he's under any pressure at this point. We'll see if this plan does work as here's Collective Company. First time getting to see this one in modern. So six cards is what Goldfarb will take a look at. We'll, find, we'll see if he can find two things. Two copies of Voice of Resurgence. You don't mind that too much. Two beaters is good. He needs a clock. Now, if you look at the clock, that's four damage. Um, that's not going to raise the hive minds that Chris has. So if, what David can do is if he can cord into something like Viscera Seer and get these both these voices to be elementals, it's possible he can improve his clock by a lot. Okay. Van will take a draw. Picked up a copy of Azusa. A great card to draw. It's not actually going to improve his clock. I think Chris is still better served by just transmuting for that pact and having the turn five kill. I guess he is at 16, so no real need for a blocker at this point. Yeah, well, a blocker's not much better than... The question is, you know, is it better than having that transmute available? Uh, I'm not positive it is. He'll start by playing Algaria Rot Farm. The trigger from Amulet will untap that. He'll add some mana, pick it up. Sure. Like he's going to do some Azusa shenanigans now. Yes, yeah, so we can get the Azusa for free here, which may mean that if David had a kill spell right now, he would not get to transmute, but that is not going to be the case. So now, going for this line, he can just go straight for the, the kill line. Yep. Yep. There is Hive Mine. And now it's time for a couple of packs, two of them. Yeah, this is the most aggressive line. If David had a kill spell in response to that first bounce land when Azusa was played, so then Chris doesn't actually get the second land drop. Because the bounce line has a trigger. So bounce line has a trigger. Interrupt. You can interrupt the Azusa extra land drops. But this is going to kill him, as David didn't have the kill spell. Two copies of Summoner's Pack will go in the stack. And of course, with Hive Mind, it gets a little complicated. I I'll let you explain that very quickly. Sure. So Hive Mind, and we went through this last time he does it, whenever any player plays an instant, all players play the instant. So Chris is going to play two copies of Summoner's Pack, which means David plays them. And it means on David's next turn, he has to pay two green green for each Summoner's Pack or lose the game. That's eight mana. David does not have that. So he does end up losing on his upkeep. David agreed to a deal that he couldn't pay. Yeah. Couldn't pay. Why would he agree to a deal he It was pay? foolish to play so many packs. I know. That was just not very smart, David. Chris Van Reeder does win game number one here over David Goldfarb. Amulet Bloom up a game over Obzon Company. We'll start with Goldfarb's sideboard and his two Path Exiles, his two Dromokas Commands, his three copies of Thoughtseize, a Kosali Pride Mage, and a Thirstmorn Candidate to Spell Sky, and a Sin Collector, along with the Scavenging Ooze, and even Mind Sensor, and Orzhov Pontiff, and a Kataki's War Wage. Uh, you mentioned Mind Sensor right at the top, so I imagine that's going to be coming in. Any other cards kind of scare you from the Amulet Bloom side? Uh, well, Thought Seize is great. Um, I don't think this is a matchup where Chris is going to want to board in something like Leyline of Sanctity. There's not enough targeted effects. So the Thought Seizes should just be good. You can pick apart those hands. Yeah, Avon Mind Sensor seems great. Definitely am a fan of that. Um, Kasali Pride Mage, extra copies of that are fine. I don't... I think they're, they're okay to board in just because a 2-2 is, is pretty reasonable here already. The uh, last card you can look at is Aether Sworn Canonist. Now, that card is okay in this matchup. Um, sometimes Chris will just play a Primeval Titan, and that won't help at all. But it does stop things like Pact. It's really good against cards like Summoner's Pact, and I think it's troublesome enough that he'll board it in. Okay. On Van Meter's side, he's got his three Ley Line of Sanctity, his three Thraxos, one Hornet Queen, two Pyroclasm, two Seal of Primordium, a Chromantic Lantern, an Engineer Explosives, a Chalice of the Void, and a Ghost Quarter. Now, we have seen this deck just kind of try to play a mid-range game with Hornet Queen and Thraxos, and he's got his main deck copy of Dragon Lord Dromoka. Are we on that plan, or are we still on the combo plan? We're on the combo plan. The value creatures aren't going to stack up well against Obzon Company. They're much, they're enough better at the at the creatures game that a Thrag Tusk, while it might buy you a turn, won't win the game in this matchup. So the cards I think he'll go toward are things like the two Pyroclasm, the one copy of Engineered Explosives, and that just might be it. Uh, as far as what he's boarding out, I don't think he really likes Dragon Lord Dromoka, and some of the utility lands like Cavern of Souls really aren't necessary here. Okay. Well, both players will sideboard, get ready for game number two. David Goldfarb already shuffling. He'll be on the play. So we will talk about Chris Van Meter, number 14 on our season two leaderboard. Player who resides in Roanoke, Virginia, with 17 Open Series top eights, four wins, most recent in Syracuse with Green Red Dragons a few months ago. 
former college football player, top rated chess player, and of course his two successful Kickstarter campaigns for Beard Power and the BBD versus CVM playmat. The one thing that has eluded him thus far is an invitational top eight, but he is well on his way there. And again, you were there right from the start. We have recorded video evidence during the pregame show. Hashtag Team CVM. Yes. Tweet it, everyone. You, you were on board from the start. No front running, no jumping on. You said, I would play Amulet Bloom. I would be Chris Van Meter for this tournament. I'm on board. He hasn't lost yet. No, and especially if you look at in the players race, you know, Chris is not near the top of this. This is, you're, you're at right now, at least in our, in our points race, you say, you know, pulling someone out of the field. This is, this is not, I don't think the player that immediately can, you'd say like, he's really hot going into this event. Yeah. Now, he's number 14 on our season two leaderboard, but you know, Kevin Jones has such a huge lead on things that it, it's, especially because Kevin's made day two, I think now we've got to the point where he can't even be caught. And it looks like he secured his invite to the Players' Championship yet again. So congratulations to Kevin. But we can't forget, Chris was there last year. He wants to get back this year for the end of the year tournament where there's a lot on the line. He wasn't too happy with his performance last year, uh, but he said he loved the tournament. He wants to get back. And this might be the best way to go about doing that. He's having a great weekend so far. A lot of rounds of magic left to be played, especially if he makes the elimination rounds, but he's having as good a start as you can possibly hope for. And I'm actually with you. You know, as far as decks are concerned, Amulet Bloom is a heck of a choice if you can kind of harness its power, but his standard choice, Green Red Devotion, looks to be a really good one. Yeah, and remember, if he gets to the top eight, Amulet Bloom is going to be the deck he's going to play. The top D eight of this event is Modern. But both decks seem like great choices for the weekend. I mean, we've watched him play, like, look at his pairings with Amulet Bloom. He plays played right now against Naya Zoo and Obzon Company. I mean, these are both just excellent matchups for the deck. These are not twin decks, which no, is a good thing. No, these aren't twin decks. I mean, he dodged the Joe Lissette matchup. That, that's, <laughs> that one's horrid for Amulet Bloom. <laughs> Joe Lissette playing a Goryeo's Vengeance Gristlebrand deck. It's a real flimsy combo deck, but it can kill you it's very faster. fast. It's faster than Amulet. That's the problem. That's for sure. We're going to see if this company deck can kind of stand up to what Van Meter's doing here. Goldfarb Mulligan to five that game caused some real issues, and his collected company didn't really net him what he was looking for. So we'll see if a seven-card hand can do much better. And he does have some good cards on the sideboard, as we mentioned. The copies of Thoughtseize, maybe After Swan Candace, maybe Sin Collector, even Mind Sensor are certainly going to come in. Some nice options here for David. I mean, the issue here is that even though David was on five, there just aren't many draws he has that matter, at least in, out of that situation. Um, his goldfish turn is five or six. You know, his deck is great at making value, but it doesn't kill quickly. And Chris was just able to ignore what David was doing. Well, Goldfarb going to take a look at his opening hand. Yeah, he'll be on the play here. I'll lay enough, that's four games that we've watched from Van Meter as Goldfarb's going to take another mulligan. And still nothing explosive. No crazy amulet, summer bloom, boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, this deck needs to be banned. Just some kind of honest magic. Well, he did have a turn four kill that last game. That was the he most dishonest he's He had been. to tap deck the Azusa for it. Yes. And there was some risk involved, yes. whereas he had a safer turn five. So, but, you know, he had, it's not, there are other decks that can kill on turn four. For example, Splinter Twin can kill on turn four. Of course. Um, Burn can kill on turn four. I'm desensitized to turn four kills. That's where we're just at in modern. I, I expect You don't say that kill. was unfair. You're like, oh yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. modern. To me, that's just, ah, that's just modern. You know, just Splinters went on turn four, or Burn killed me on turn four, or Zoo killed me on turn four. I don't know, can Scape Shift kill on turn four? No. No, typically, um, typically a turn five deck, Well, you could, let's see, if you pull off a ramp spell, yeah, you can, it's, it's, you can search for tomorrow turn one, try Belter turn two, that gets you to five lands. Yeah, yeah, you can, and then the combo turn, you search and Scape Shift. Okay, sure. But we, there's, no is the short answer, but it, there, <laughs> we could set one up. A ley line of sanctity is going to start things off here for Chris. Yeah, I'm interested in, in that he went for that card here, but it, it's going to be reasonable. There are thought seasons and a copy of Sin Collector in David's deck. So it may just be better than some of the other things. For example, I talked about the cards you could board out. Pact and Negation is really terrible here also. Radiant Fountain is how he'll start things, so he'll begin the game at 22. Chris does have a copy of Amulet Vigor in hand, but it doesn't look like he has much interest in playing it. Now, his hand looks a little clunky. There's a Pyroclasm oh over there. It looks like a Summer Bloom. I think he has Summer... He has Summer Bloom, Primeval Titan, Amulet. I don't think he has the Bounce Land. Yep. I think he actually has no colored mana. So he has he has a Pyroclasm. Um, he has a second Ley Line. There's a lot of a lot of do nothing here. Now any bounce, a green Bounce Land will immediately result in a Primeval Titan. Got it. So he's keeping what looks to be a, I guess a Sketcher, but in reality not actually the case. Well, there's 
there's nine green bounce lands in the deck. Um, if he finds a red mana source, then he can pyroclasm. The sands a keep. They're, you're right that there certainly can be... Yeah, he, he could sit here with colorless lands in play for a while. He's under no pressure. Look at him, he's a 22. David doesn't even have anything. Maybe he has two amulets as well. Goldfarb's going to sacrifice those fetch lands very quickly, go down to 16. Aha, David Mind Sensor. Yeah, man. that's good. He's going to get some basics here in a forest and a plains. I think we might see the 2 1 in just a moment. Well, ideally, David would like to play the 2 1 when Chris, in response to a Primeval Titan. Um, as we know, Chris does have Pyroclasm. And I, playing it out there is fine. Um, the only other ways that Chris searches is Chalaria West. In for two comes Goldfarb. Now keep in mind, this is only an opponent. If an opponent would search their library, that player searches the top four cards of their library instead. A wall of roots and a passing of the turn there from Goldfarb. The third Amulet of Vigor. Nice. He's going to play one. We'll see if he wants to play the other one or not. The reason he's not playing the other ones is that if he draws the bounce land, okay. he can tap both colorlesses for amulets, play a bounce land. So he already, keeping two is fine. Keeping three, he actually couldn't make them all in one turn. Got it. Well, he could, but he would end up losing a mana because of it. Cool there turf. we go. Now, what he can't, this unfortunately for David means that Chris has enough mana that he can clasm and then Titan. So how it works is he plays both amulets. He's going to play Gruel Turf. So now, because there's all these untaps, each land drop makes six mana. Jeez. So here's six off Gruel Turf. It'll probably bounce itself. He'll play Summer Bloom. It'll go down to four, but he'll have three additional land drops, so he'll have 22 mana available. One could argue Gruel Turf was the best one to draw. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gruel Turf was... The fact that it made red was really important. So he can then Clasm, have 20 floating, and actually could make uh, four Primeval Titans. How much float? 20? Yes. Okay. 20. I mean, and then eat the Primeval... So the thing is, the Primeval Titans are actually going to produce mana. All right. Because the Primeval Titans, if you get a... If the first Titan gets a Teleria Wet... This is great. So the, if he just wants to go for the... the just go wild here. A Primeval Titan can get a Bounce Land, a Simic Growth Chamber, and a Teleria West. They'll untap three times, so they'll make six blue, three green, which is just enough mana to transmute the Teleri West for Primeval for a Pact, play the Summer's Pact, and play Primeval Titan with conveniently the nine mana you just made. Ah. So Titan gets another Titan for free. Okay. So he could play all four Titans out of his deck. Then if he, the last Titan gets the Slayer's Stronghold and Boros Garrison, well, it will untap three additional times, so he can give them all haste in 2-0. No, it's really neat. Okay, well, we're going to see if he finds that line of play because this is real hard. I know you've been doing this for a while, so thank God you're next to me right now. Yeah, well, he for, can only give three this. of them haste. He can't actually give the fourth one Oh, haste. darn, that's well. So he may want to stop at three times. Deals off. I'm not interested anymore. But he can double strike um, all of them <laughs> also. He's going to start with Pyroclasm. That's where he's starting things. Okay. He's going to use that to kill Aven Mindset. That's bad news for David if this happens. Yeah. So right there. Summer Bloom has been cast. He's got mana floating. Right. I don't know how many times he's played the Gruel Turf yet. Only played it once. Okay. So, so he played. And that's he correct. Played, he played Gruel Turf. So he has red, red. So he has four floating. He played. So he played Gruel Turf. Played Summer Bloom. Yep. And then played Pyroclast. So he has two floating. Correct. At the he should have he has two, two floating, floating and three land drops remaining. Remember, each land drop is six, six mana. mana. Mm -hmm. So he can go up to twenty. If you're at home, get out your notebook. Get out your your mechanical pencil. Be prepared to erase. Do you? I know you teach mechanical pencil sure. the way to go. No, uh, pilot pilot G two pens. Okay, new sponsor of the open series. If you buy them online, you can get them in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> David is going to sacrifice a fetch light here in response. We might have a quarter calling, maybe a collective company. That's really the way. The only way he can interact. Abrupt the case, not going to do a ton right now, given that there are three amulets on the table. You actually do you have a pilot on you? Yeah, why would I not? Oh, my God. Hey, you never know when you need to write something. My math teacher told me not to use pen. Well, that's because he wants to grade your things. And that he's assuming you're going to make mistakes. Ah, I like that. You're assuming I won't make a mistake. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I'm not giving you the pen. I'm using the pen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David deciding what land he wants to search up. Considering just a basic forest, he'll go with the basic forest. Again, quarter calling. Collect right. a company. Those are the options right now for him. So he can actually cord for Aethersworn Canonist, I believe. 
That's so if he has it in. He's got to pick the right spot to do it though, right? Because by in response to the pyroclasm, he's the wrong time to do it. Right. So he would let this resolve, and then what I would try to do is wait until Chris has a bounce land trigger on the stack, and then cord for cannonist. Yeah. And because Chris has already played the Pyroclasm, he would be done for the turn. And he's already played the Summer Room, so you're... Well, he can play the lands from Summer Room a couple times, but that's not really what he wants to do here. Right. So let's see what Goldfarb's going to do. This, this looks like a collected company. This is a company in response. Yeah, this, this, this could really backfire. Well, if he doesn't have the Canonist in his deck, he doesn't have the line to court for it. This is true. That's card number six. And it looks like he did find two creatures. Looks like a Kitchen Finks is hiding out in there. Maybe a Birds of Paradise, I mean, too. I don't know if he realizes just with three amulets just how many unfair things Chris can do here. Like, I mentioned a line where Chris gets 24 power. He gets, like, Chris has a swing for 48 with Trample this turn. Um, so I don't, I'm not particularly concerned of what value creatures David's going to put into play. <laughs> You're not terribly scared of a Kitchen Finks right now? How much life does it gain? Yeah. I mean, that's... <laughs> Still two. Yeah, Still and two. I guess it, like, box for two. They're... We're not worried. But again, when you're playing Amulet Bloom, it is kind of this weird puzzle. So though, though you see that crazy line that I would never find, we'll see if Chris can. He's pretty well versed in the deck at this point. And this is, again, all in response to just a Pyroclasm. That's how things got started. Now, there's two copies of Kitchen Finks. Collective Company is done resolving. We'll get two triggers from the Finks, so Goldfarb will gain four life. Power Class will resolve. Kitchen Finks will persist. He'll gain four more life. So now he's, he's up to, he's in the 20s. We said 48, 48 trample. That's possible here. That is a possible turn for this deck. Let's see if Van Meter can find it. I mean, so to be fair, you need the tr stuff like Triple Amulet to do these kind of things. Oh, yeah. The, one of the tricks is when you have a good line, you oftentimes just have a better line, and you can really go to town. Here's Primeval Titan. So it looks like he has cashed in another of his Gruel Turf okay. triggers. So let's see what he's going to search up. So if he's going for the line, I believe he's going to go for it. He goes for... Okay, so he, he needs to be thinking bigger here. He could be going for Simic Growth Chamber Teleria West. And like I said, because it untaps three times and makes nine, it just transmutes and casts a Titan for free. So he could just make more Titans and more Titans, and he could give them all haste. He's going the Slayer Stronghold route, however, with the Boros Garrison. Right, so this was part of the line that he could do, and this will still work. So he gives it, he, he gets to use this three times, so the Titan goes up to an eight, six, up to a 10, six, and may go up to a 12, six, and he can still double strike it. So it's still 24. But he could do so much more. He could do a lot more. He, yeah. could, he could have a whole horde of Titans attacking with Double Strike. He's going to pick up the Slayer Stronghold. Or excuse me, he'll pick up the... What is, why is that card name eluding me? The Sun Home. Sun Home. The Sun Home Fortress of the Legion. Excuse me. So, okay, so, yeah, and I mean, he does... Okay, the Sun Home was in play, doesn't actually... So he still could do the line with Sun Home in play also. He would have to Vesuva the Sun Home, and if the other Primeval Titan triggers get uh, Gruel Turf and Celestia Sanctuary to get the Red White to pay for Sun Home, but it would have still been possible. People are wondering, like, how would you double strike it if the Sun Home's already in play? Got it. So now Turf is going to tap for a bunch of mana. You can see, though Chris is well versed in this deck, the lines with this deck again, it's, it's, like, it's like a puzzle. Here's another okay, so if he has titan. two titans, maybe now he's going for the multiple titans. I didn't know yet. If he has a second titan, then he doesn't. The first titan doesn't have to do that. Okay. So let's see what this one's gonna get. Looking at a gemstone mine. I mean, Simic Girl Chamber Telerius is still a good option here because you just of all the mana it produces. He can haste the second Titan. So the first Titan is a 10-6. He can make the second one an 8-6. And then on attack, he can still get the lands to double strike both of them. Okay. So instead of 48 damage trample, we're still at 36, which if you look at Coldfarb's life hold on blockers, is still lethal. Still plenty. So to double strike them, what he'll have to get, because is that he'll have to use, if he has a land drop left, and I believe he does, he'll need to put the Slayer Stronghold into play, or the Sun Home into play from his hand again. Okay. Because it needs to be in play when he attacks. Yep. So then when he attacks, one of the Titan triggers will get Vesuva and 
Uh, sorry, the, you'll have to stack so the first Titan triggers that come into play get Gruel Turf and Celestia Sanctuary. And the second set of triggers need to get Vesuva and something. And the Vesuva copies the Slayer Stronghold, and then you double strike both of them. Well, David said, you know, I'm I can't take this anymore. You're gonna you're gonna kill me, aren't you? And Chris says, Yeah, eventually. Oh, yeah. Eventually I'm gonna figure this out. You're not getting another turn. I can promise you that much. And he does extend the hand. So Chris Van Meter trying to harness the power of Amulet Bloom. He's finding a way to do it, even though it is very, very tough. He wins this match two games to zero. He is now 9-0 and here at the Season 2 Invitational. 5-0 and with Amulet If he Bloom. gets to keep playing against Turn 1 Forest Mana Creature, though, Chris <laughs> is going to have a 12-0 start to this tournament.